our cakey healthy isn't just about taking care of their physical fitness, it's also about taking care of their mental health. Joining us now with tips on how to do that is psychologist Dr. Alana Coffey. Good morning and welcome back. Thank you. Good morning, Christine. Now, this is very important, but at what age do we need to start thinking about taking care of our child's mental health? When they're born. When they're born, <laughs> right they away. Get here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And I think that we already do. We're just not aware that that's what we're doing. So, for example, there's lots of studies on um, when babies cry. We actually know what that cry means if they're hungry or in pain or just want our attention because they don't have words. They have mm -hmm. their cries, and we, we know about that. We're attuned to their psychology already from the beginning. And why is it so important to take care of our children's mental health? Oh, okay, so just like our physical health, if a child has a cough or a cold, we notice it and we watch to see if it worsens and if it does, we know to get them some help because if we don't, we're, we know it can become pneumonia or a flu mm -hmm. and those things are life-threatening. So we know what to do with the physical, but psychologically, similarly, you know, a child could start showing symptoms and then get a depression and that actually can escalate into very serious behaviors and actions as well. So. That's why we start to pay attention to it. And I think for mental health too, a lot of times we don't start thinking about solutions until we recognize some of the problems or symptoms. Maybe they have an issue, then we think about mm -hmm. their mental health. But mm -hmm. you say be proactive about it and start from when they're born. Right. What are some of the things that we can do? We talked about when you have a baby. What about growing up? Mm -hmm. How do you treat their mental health or how do you take care of their mental health right. when right. they're in elementary and then teenage years? So cute. Well, we teach them to wash their hands, right? So we teach them, you know, your feelings are important too. And when young people come to us and say, my feelings are hurt, mm -hmm. that's like a home run. I mean, they are coming to us and saying, I need your help. And sometimes what we do instead is say, go solve it yourself. Mm -hmm. And so we um, kind of dismiss them and we dismiss the statement. And we don't recognize it as really a great opportunity to say, let's talk about your feelings. Because when they talk about their feelings, then we have the opportunity to teach them really about the world and how they see the world and maybe helping them to be able to manage their thoughts some. Even at ages five or six, children are thinking in certain ways and when they're thinking of certain ways they grow up and um, I work with a lot of adults mm -hmm. and their thinking is somewhat crystallized and it, and it didn't need to be. It can be crystallized in a kind of a negative way so we can start early on talking about how to assess what's happened to them. What about as they get older, say the teenage years or even into high school? How do right, you take care right. of their mental health? <laughs> so I work with teens, like one of my favorite age groups actually, um, and I work with some fantastic kids really, and they are high performers, and one of the things that I see with them mm -hmm. is they don't know how to fail very well. I mean, if they get really a B plus or an A minus, they're in trouble, um, psychological trouble, they're in distress, um, and what I try to help them understand is failure is a part of human life. In fact, it is a part of success. And if we're not failing, that usually means we're not even trying. Mm -hmm. So we really want to help them learn how to fail and get back up and keep going instead of um, interpreting that failure as like an all-powerful pattern. Yeah. I don't even like using the word failure because right. you, you learn a lesson no matter what you do. If you don't get what you want, you don't make a certain team, it's okay. You still have a, a life lesson there. You get yeah. stronger. It'll build you up. It builds character. So there is an event coming up that supports right, right, children's right. mental health here locally this weekend. Right. Actually, it supports the whole family. It's called the National Alliance of Mental Illness, NAMI. And they have their annual NAMI walk tomorrow. And, and our little team, Hawaii Psychology Collective, will be out there. We'll be doing finger painting. The event is free. Parking is free. Mm -hmm. There's music, games, entertainment. Um, NAMI is great and what they do is they raise funds and awareness for families, local families who have children and adult children or relatives with a mental illness because, because some of these mental illnesses um, require a whole family system of support and the caregivers themselves could use the support as well. All right, and Dr. Coffey will be there as well. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on this Aloha Friday. Have a great Thank weekend. You, you too. Have Thank fun. you. All right.